should start with playing and then I will introduce you or or we can start with the question. I can say something and you can uh, introduce me, sure, if okay. it's not too loud. No, I don't think it's So we are live, live? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right then, whenever you're ready. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah, we are. Explosive, and when we started organizing uh, the international touring, um, there was still a lot of material from from this album on, on the tour, and uh, we gradually also include now uh, pieces from the new album Rock Revolution. But um, the actual Rock Revolution tour will will start beginning of 2019. I still have to do a lot of preparation, write some new material, additional material. So right now we're still on the Explosive tour. Well, so, uh, about the energy, we felt already a bit of it, and uh, one of our followers would like to know where do you get your energy that you are sharing with the audience during the concert? Well, I am a very positive person, yeah, and um, I guess when you wake up and you're, you're still alive, that should make you feel energetic. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think uh, you have to take each day with, with the most enthusiasm and do the best out of it, you know. Only, only that way you can ensure that your life is, is full of nice events. Good, thank you. Um, regarding the Riga, so this is your, which time in Riga? It is my first. First? Yes, my first. So the day of the concert, the 8th of the December, will be your second time? Yes. So one of our followers would like to know what you are going to bring home as your impression about Riga and Latvia. Um, well, we arrived very late tonight, uh, last night, I mean, and um, so this morning we had very early breakfast TV, so it was quite uh, not not quite enough sleep. Um, but I, first of all, I'm very happy the weather is slightly cold but extremely nice and. Um, we had the opportunity to uh, to do two very very short short walks earlier today, and so far my impressions are that people are extremely friendly. I just did a radio uh, interview, very nice, cool guys, and um, so far a very good impression. Hopefully, I'll get the time in next time to to get even more more insight, Latvia. Okay, so you mentioned mentioned already the weather. Yeah. Uh, what time of the year is the most favorite for you and why? Um, Alright, uh, they can see what time, time of the year is the most favorite. 
I would say, uh... It's uh, my um, time of the year because I um, there's a certain smell uh, which reminds me of my childhood. And I don't know, it always uh, makes me feel very um, very calm and relaxed. So somehow I feel that you already know our questions or something because uh, one of the followers would like to know if you like ski skiing. Yeah. Uh, as your colleague Vanessa Mea, mm. and um, may we expect yeah. to see you in Winter Olymp Olympics? In well, first of all, I'm way too old for that, but thank you very much for the, you know, enthusiasm here. Um, I've never skied in my whole life, and it also has, or mainly has to do with the fact that my parents didn't want me to do certain activities which might put my fingers in harm, so certain things in school like volleyball, basketball, and uh, yeah, well, how do you say, um, skate, uh, skateboard, and all, all that stuff uh, I wasn't really allowed to do, and skiing, unfortunately, falls into that category. Although I was always a little jealous, because my brother got to go to um, winter holiday thingies with, with his um, class in school, and um, I never got to go, so, eh, maybe someday, when I don't play that much, I'll try to pick it up. Okay. So, and you are again leading to the next question, yeah. and the next question is, if the father would have bought you a guitar instead of violin, would you become a guitarist? Probably. <laughs> I, I was, you know, like every child, in the end, you try to get the attention from your parents, and I think it's a normal thing that you want them to, to listen and, and pay attention and, and play with you and, you know, spend time with you, so in the end, I guess me working hard on the violin was me sharing time with my with my father, and if he would have given me a guitar, I probably would have been the same. Yeah. Probably might have even picked up the piccolo or flute or something. I have no idea, but I guess it was it was at that point the only instrument really in the house available. So I uh, I chose I ch chose whatever was there. Okay. So, um, as you have certain experience with playing yeah. the violin, uh, one just of our, certain, uh, just a bit, <laughs> just a bit. So, one of our followers would like to know um, how often do you change the violin bows, and which is your favorite band, brand of violins? Um, well, brand is funny. I mean, there are, um, of course, really good violin makers, especially in uh, Cremona in the um, 18th, 17th, 18th century. Um, it's very difficult to just name one violin maker, but usually a very nice Antonio Stradivari or a very nice Guarneri del Gesù are the, the most sought after instruments sound wise for, for any violin sol soloist. So I, I agree, those are also my two favorite brands. And um, what's the first part again of the question? Uh, how, was, many, uh, how often do you change your violin bows? Um, well, the violin bow doesn't really necessarily change, but you know, obviously, when you play um, when you play uh, Tchaikovsky, for example. <laughs> A certain while when like about 30 40 uh, hairs break you have to get a rehair it takes like about half a day and then it's as good as new it's new again uh, regarding the Tchaikovsky part uh, one mm -hmm. of our followers has uh, attended uh, your concert mm -hmm. on 24th of August in uh, Vaduz or yes so she remembers that that day it was a really rainy day but yeah. as soon as you started to play the rain uh, Went away. Well, I, I wish I wish they had anything to do with me, but trust me, uh, if I had uh, the possibility to change the weather, <laughs> that would be a cool thing. But you know, I guess I was uh, very lucky. And, you know, it's sometimes it's the opposite. I start playing, and the rain starts pouring. So you know, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. 
So you now you're even reading the question without me asking this. Because <laughs> well, the question was exactly about the, yeah. your influence on the weather. No, so no influence at all. No. I, I, I wish sometimes because I played some shows where it was really pouring and I felt extremely bad for all the musicians on stage and of course the audience is being soaked. And um, well, you can't change it, you know, just have to have a good spirit. So regarding the music you're playing, you yeah. are very various in choosing the, the, the music yeah. and, and the songs. Yeah. So uh, is there any music that you feel as boring? No, no, no. I mean, there's, there's pieces which I don't necessarily like too much. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a personal preference though, you know. S something which I don't like, a lot of people love, and something I love, a lot of people don't like. And that's the beauty of music. It's, you know, each music and composer has a certain character. And uh, you don't have to love or dislike everything, you know, it's, it's the balance and it's also your personal preference and taste. Mm. So that's why one of the uh, followers is interested in how you manage to, um, to arrange a, a rap song, Lose Yourself. <laughs> well, uh, well, basically I, we took the, the rhythm from the... Um, Eminem, and then we ended up, you know, creating a melody on top. They're exactly the rhythms which are also used uh, in the um, in the rap from Eminem. So, just created a little bit more of a line because it would have been boring if it would just be on one note. So, so, now, it, so, it, it so means now it becomes a little bit melodic and it works for the instrument. You always have to find, if you really truly like a piece, you have to find a way around. You know. So, uh, is there a particular song or musical piece that never fails to move you emotionally? It really depends on my mood. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's very difficult because sometimes you feel in, in more um, melancholic mood, sometimes you're like full of energy and you like listening to up-tempo up numbers. Um, very difficult. I mean, I, I love Disney soundtracks, I can listen to them all the time. So I guess that's something I, I love oh, and enjoy. Yeah. Uh, regarding the classical music, is there any specific performer that you like? And what's your fa favorite piece of classical music? Well, I would definitely say from, from the living performers, uh, Itzhak Perlman, my uh, teacher. And great, great violinist. Legend. Legend. And um, regarding... Uh, composers are very difficult. I mean, the, the obvious ones, Mozart, Brahms, Bach, Beethoven, I would, I, I would go with those. Uh, one more question regarding your personal attitude to, to violin playing is, okay. <laughs> like, have you ever teached anyone to play violin or... or, or? Um, yeah, people have come to me and asked, how do you do this and how do you do that? And Sometimes, occasionally, um, uh, young kids, obviously, um, I try to help. I never, well, I can't see myself right now doing, uh, you know, being a teacher, because I think it is a responsibility. You can't just teach once every two months. I think that would not be fair towards the student, because you need that guidance at least once a week. I'm just speaking out of experience. Also, for me, when I was young, I needed that help once a week at least and I wouldn't be able to to fulfill that need so um, until I, I can actually do that it's um, I'm, I'm not gonna start uh, teaching but it's definitely something which I would uh, like doing in the future I think it's extremely uh, fulfilling to see as uh, to work with young people and um, you know give something back to the community uh, as we all know, tours are take are very tiring and taking a lot of from you. Uh, so, is there any uh, specific way how you are taking care of your physical condition? 
Uh, I try not to eat too much junk food. I think it starts with food, you know, with eating right, with not drinking alcohol, you know, with going to bed early. You know, it's very simple things, very simple things. If you have time, you know, do some sports, but I think everything, um, I think good health really comes from um, not eating too much sugar and not drinking alcohol, or just very limited. Um, so, you have success in your passion as a superstar violinist. This, as, these, uh, these words, I, yeah, this, but, I but wake up every morning, I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, jeez. So, um, <laughs> it's yep. funny to hear them. I always have to laugh because I, I don't really have anything to do with that term. Yeah, but you see, uh, one of our followers really uh, feels that you are uh, radiantly attractive and uh, influential. And uh, loved by lots of uh, people, especially women. It's, that is that is too sweet. That it's is too sweet. I I am um, embarrassed. But thank you. So uh, it seems that you are having everything in your life and nothing to ask. But uh, if you would uh, have that one desire, what for you would use it? Like what? One what, wish. What, yeah. yeah. One. What will give you true tears of joy? Tears of joy. Um, when last time I really cried was when my brother got married. Um, I was super happy for him, for him to find somebody he, he truly loved, and um, you know, also him uh, having his first child was quite moving to me. Uh, so greetings from Russia as well. Ah. So Yulia is right. It's uh, having a comment and a question. Um, Imagine if you were stand, uh, strained on a desert island. What kind of three things or people you would take with you and why? What things or what people? Oh, <laughs> it sure. might be things <laughs> or people. Like You can choose. Um, well, obviously then I'm going to choose people. Um, I might actually... But is there any food on the island? Well, you, you need to be a little more strategic about that. If there's food on the island, I can I would probably choose the people. If there's no food, I would probably survival instinct go for bringing food or a lighter or you know matches or firestone in order to kind of cook the water. Just so not I'm not going to die because of you know bacteria in the the water. Um, maybe a knife again if there's no food. So at least can maybe hopefully fish a fish. But um, if, if this is all provided, like at least, you know, some kind of bananas or something, <laughs> then, uh, then probably would take you know, my brother and, no, I'm not going to take my brother. What am I talking about? He has his family to so support. So you have to take his family uh, too. I know, but, th but that's not good because he loves his job. I can't take him out of his job. I'll probably take my, my manager because uh, he anyway goes with me anywhere I go, so I guess he has to also endure that. So you're not going to take Violin with you? It's going to be way too hot on an island. My poor instrument. I'll, I'll pick up the Violin when I get back home after I build uh, like uh, a little ship. <laughs> or York builds it for me. <laughs> <laughs> We have a lady from Ukraine uh, who's wondering how you get rid of uh, uh, annoying female fans. Uh, I've, could I've, you share some exciting so story that you have lived through? I've, I've never had the, uh, the feeling to get rid of somebody. Uh -oh. so, so far, nobody's been you know, annoying. I mean, some people are maybe a little bit sometimes too close to your face, and when you sit, and then they go and they talk to you like this. And I'm like, uh, do I know you? It's strange. It is, it, is very, it is very strange. And I'm like, sometimes I'm like, mm, I wouldn't do that. But, you know, everybody's different. And uh, another thing is which, which I am personally not a big fan of is, give me your cell phone for a second. It's the, you're sitting at the airport with a hoodie on, and you have people going like, wait, wait, wait for it. And you know exactly they're not texting. And then I'm like, Jesus, I'm wearing sweatpants and, and a hoodie, and I, I don't even want to take a picture. And um, yeah, it's, you know, on the one hand, this thing is, is, is a wonderful, genius device. On the other hand, it's, it can also be the freaking devil. 
At least <laughs> in these two situations. Here we go. Um, one more question from Olga from Russia. All right. And she's interested to know if, if, um, if what day would you like to live a second time and why? Um, I've never even considered thinking about that. Um, I think as a musician, we live in the most creative period because of the exposure we can have. You know, if, if you really want to choose being a musician and want to have that life, you have every possibility. You don't need a management anymore. You don't need a record contract. Um, of course, universal. Uh, I'd never said that. But basically, what I'm trying to say is um, it, it's possible to, to do everything by yourself. It's possible to, to do um, full arrangements on the laptop. It's possible to, to create a whole orchestra piece just with Pro Tools or Logic and you know, spend a few hundred euros on, on these programs and you can create your own music, which sounds so good these days that, you, that I can't even distinguish if it's a real orchestra or if it's coming out of, um, uh, of, out of programming. So, as a musician, I could not imagine any more fun time to live in. Uh, how do you explain your music to death? To what? To death. Ah, to de I understood dead. I'm like, oh, no. uh, Jesus Christ, that's going to be difficult. Because um, I haven't really experienced the afterlife yet. Um, how do you explain your music to death? Um, oh, that's, that's impossible. I mean, um, I guess what, what I sometimes uh, or, you know, hear is that they, they, they feel the rhythms and the bass. Um, that's how sometimes they can even like dance and, and also enjoy music. But to explain music, that it's going to be difficult. It's like explaining color to somebody who can't see. It's very, very, very difficult. I, I wouldn't even, um, I wouldn't even know where to start. Maybe I'm, I'm not creative enough in my imagination right now. But that's, that's a difficult one. Anyway, your your performance on the stage explains everything. And well, you know, luckily I do play an instrument which is very visual, but I don't think it, it really gives the meaning of music per se over, but it's difficult. Uh, so the uh, one really, really anxious fan from Russia is interested, interested about the concert on the 23rd of December that you're going to have in Russia. Yes. So is there going to be some some special performance or some secrets that you can reveal already now? Or? I have no idea. I, I even might think it might be a private concert because so far I don't think any, anything has been announced. I'm ah. looking in this direction. Is it private? I is think it so. We, we're not entirely sure. Oh, but at least we know that it's on 8th of December. I, I will be in the city. Yep. On 8th? This is the, about the Latvian. The Latvian concert is today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. so By the way, one in Russia. This, is, this is my manager in the background, just in case that. Hold on. Go. Ha ha. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Say hello. Hi. All right, you have to make sure that you can see me again. So on the eighth, exactly yeah. in Latvia. So what you're going to be on the eighth of December? Uh, I will try to get some sound out of this wooden box. And that's it. No, no, we're going to play some stuff from the new album. We're going to play some uh, pieces from Explosive, some old, uh, old favorites of mine. Um, I'm going to travel with my band here. So they consist of uh, two guitarists, bass, drums, and, and keyboards. And uh, we're just going to have a great time. We're going to play some fun music from rock to classical to R&B, a little bit of uh, jazz, and just have a fun evening. Basically, I think that I have gone through all the questions, so I will give you some time to think. Or right, do you mind if I just have a quick look okay. over them? So, which one was? Uh, well, those are the questions I haven't even you haven't even asked yet. No, I have asked them all, but like there, there was were... something with the flood of the bumblebee I just read, and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, you, if you if you find someone someone um, asking something that I didn't manage to ask you. See, uh, <laughs> Sorry for for I, I just want to be real and, and honest with which one I prefer. Hmm. 
difficult because they were all very nice. Um, I guess the most fun question was, uh, I wonder how you get rid of annoying female fans. It's not true that I, I ever feel that way, but at least it was a very bold question to ask. So, so then we can uh, announce... Uh, I hope that person doesn't live like in uh, Argentina. <laughs> that would be not good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Then we just announce that Diana okay. is the one who will attend your concert and, uh, okay. and will enjoy your performance. Perfect. Diana, congratulations. <laughs> so is there anything else you would like to wish to our followers or the people who are going to your concert or, um, or me? Well, I... Uh, I guess the, the most important thing, everybody, please stay healthy and enjoy life, stay positive, and hopefully, um, you know, music is in your life because it makes your day better. So, uh, should I play something to yeah, just nice. finish this show? <laughs> Let's do something. Bye.